Hi, hello, and welcome uh, to today's topic. Today we are going to talk about energy conservation strategies for activities of daily living. Basically, how to do things around the house and save some energy at the same time. Uh, my name is Jessica. For those of you I haven't met, I am one of the exercise physiologists with the program, and we look forward to meeting you in the future and seeing most of you all again. So let's go ahead and get started for today. So what is energy conservation? Um, like I said earlier, it's basically planning ahead. So it's taking time to organize and plan your daily activities in order to avoid undue fatigue and increase shortness of breath. In other words, we want to try to save you some energy on those days that you're not having a good breathing day or you're extremely tired, you didn't sleep well. So just some tips and clues on how to do that. So activities of daily living, it's a term you hear a lot, means ADL, but it's basically what you need to be able to do if you want to stay independent. Uh, and so what that means is bathing yourself, showering yourself, toileting yourself, getting yourself dressed, being able to prepare food for yourself, and other household activities that allow you to function normally. All right, so we are going to start in the bathroom today. So how many of you have a shower seat? Uh, I know I got a seat in my shower. We were quite excited. It is very handy when it comes to shaving. Um, and sometimes when you get a little tired, it's also good to do. Uh, use a long handled sponge to wash your lower legs and wash your back. So nobody can reach back there, but if you had a little sponge, you could definitely reach that and they make those nowadays. Use a handheld shower hose like they're showing in the picture here, like this one. So they're very easy to attach uh, and you can put them, they attach right onto the nozzle. You unscrew one, you screw the other one up. Believe me, if my husband can do it, then you can put one up as well. They're very handy. Uh, and nowadays they also make an attachment that you can put it at the bottom so that if you have a bathtub or you're sitting on the side, you can put the handle down there uh, and it just attaches to the wall. You can use soap on a rope, a terry cloth or a robe as well. Uh, and the soap on a rope is just makes it easier. The terry cloth robe, any guesses as to why we would want to use that? You want to use it so you don't have to use a towel. Uh, the terry cloth robe will be there for you to dry yourself off and so it's easier than toweling. First and foremost, safety is first. Uh, to make sure you use a grab bar or non-slip mats in the shower or the tub. We don't want you guys falling, getting in and out of the tub. So you want that grab bar at the end that you're gonna get in at and have those little rubber backing sticky things at the bottom of the tub. Or make sure the shower stand, wherever you're standing, is got a non-slip uh, surface on it. You want to use cool or like warm water instead of the hot water. The hot water actually will dry out your skin uh, very fast, as well as makes it a little bit warmer and harder to breathe because of all the extra air coming out, the increased humidity. And then always use your fan in your bathroom. They are required to be installed in bathrooms nowadays. And you can always leave the door open, leave a window open. But what that does is it decreases the humidity in your bathroom. And by decreasing the humidity, you also decrease the likelihood of developing mold and mildew buildup in the bathroom, which neither of those is a good situation to be breathing in. Uh, continuing with the bathroom, you don't want to stay in one position too long. So if you are doing something that takes a while, sit, have a little stool in the bathroom. Uh, that's why they make the vanities in the bathroom. So if you're shaving, gentlemen, or ladies, if you're rolling your hair, sit down to do it. You don't need to be standing up to do those things. Uh, use an elevated toilet seat or potty chair. I am very tall. We have higher toilets in our house. And yes, they cost a little bit extra, but they make a world of difference. Um, and my mother-in-law has actually asked for an even higher seat as she gets a little bit older uh, as she lives with us. So make sure you have the your ability to do that if you need it. Um, have supplies that organize to save energy. Keep the things that you use the most out on the counter. So what I have is my makeup is all in one container. I don't like it out on my counter every day, plus the kids get into it. So I have all that in one little container and I take that and I put it under the sink 
and then I can pull it out every day that I use. My husband has a shaving kit all in one space so that he just pulls it in and out as he needs it as well. And it helps keep the space cleaner, but it's also more organized so that every, we have everything we need in one location. All right, moving along. So after you shower, you gotta get dressed. So let's talk a little bit about that. Use a long handled shoehorn to put on shoes. Uh, use elastic laces so you don't have to tie them. You can put on your sock. It's using an, a sock aid. They now have one that you just drape it over the side and then your foot slides right on in. Um, use the cross leg method to put your pants on. So you cross one ankle over the knee and put on one leg, then the same thing on the other leg. And then I think it's on the next slide, but stand up and put your pants and underwear on at the same time and then stand up and pull them both up at the same time. So then you're only having to pull on, stand up once. Uh, wear slip-on shoes or Velcro shoes, again, so you don't have to worry about the tying. Uh, wear front opening clothing. So instead of having to pull anything over your head, if you have a button-up shirt, it's a lot easier to put that on and off. Um, also keep in mind, loose fitting clothing. So something that's tight and binding is going to be a lot harder to put on than something that's a lot more loose fitting. Uh, here it is. Pull both underwear and pants up to your knees, then stand up to pull them up. I use this with my kids all the time and it is very handy, especially with my three-year-old who wants to run and play instead of getting dressed. Um, avoid heavily scented toiletries. Uh, our facility, our area, we do not like anybody to wear any kind of fragrances. We have a lot of staff as well as other patients that are sensitive to it. So we'd rather you not wear that in our area. And we discourage it at home as well because the heavily scented toiletries just make it harder for you to breathe. It puts more particles in the air. Uh, same thing for putting, avoiding spray deodorants and hairspray. Anything that's going to be aerosolized is going to put more particles in the air, just as you can see in this picture here with the, um, with the hairspray coming out of the bottle. This aerosol particles are going straight into the air and thus you're then going to breathe them in. All right, continuing into the bedroom here. So now we're getting dressed and now we got to make the bed and do everything else in the bedroom. Uh, so use a comforter rather than a bedspread. It's a lot easier to make the bed then. So the comforters are a little bit lighter weight, but they still provide the same amount of warmth or using a lightweight blanket uh, instead of the big bedspread. Same thing with the duvet. The duvets tend to be a little bit heavier. They're pretty, but they're not as easy to make. Um, keep the temperature cool for sleeping and for better breathing. So the ideal temperature is between 70 degrees and 67 degrees uh, for sleeping, closer to the 67 degree area. Uh, now, personally, the cool when the air conditioner is on, I can tolerate, I have to have a higher temperature versus when the heat's on, then I can do a lower temperature. But you have to find where your happy medium is, but ideally between 67 and 70. Uh, put your sh more than one set of sheets on at a time. We had a patient who actually recommended this to us, and uh, this is what she did. And I use it with my kids as well. Um, my kids still would occasionally have accidents in the bed when they were first getting toilet trained, and now they're doing just fine. But we put on one set of sheets. We have the a um, oh, what is that thing called? A, it's a bed wetter sheet. And so we put that in between the sets. And that way, if they wet the bed in between in the middle of the night, we just strip off the top sheet. Or and if the other option is if you are a heavy sweater or um, do have some incontinence issue, is putting that the bed wetter sheet actually under the sheets so you don't have to strip the whole bed down. You don't have to worry about changing off the mattress pad too. You just strip the sheets. Make sure you use a fan to circulate the air at night. It keeps the air moving and um, slightly movement to the air makes it a lot easier to breathe and a lot more tolerable for you to be in. All right, now we're gonna talk about in the bedroom, more activities in the bedroom. So intimacy comes in many forms, hugging, kissing, touching, Holding hands and snuggling are all forms of intimacy. Uh, so sex isn't always the only one that we can do. So you can find other ways and other options to explore that intimate relationship with your partner. So make sure the biggest thing though is to maintain open communication. So it's between you and your partner and between you and your doctor. So your doctor needs to know when you are planning to resume sexual activities in the bedroom. And it can be as 
you know, soon as 24 hours after getting out of the hospital. Depends on what was going on, what you had done, but your doctor does need to know. Uh, and sometimes your medications can affect activities in the bedroom. So you may need a phosphodiurease race like Viagra or Cialis. And if you do, that is fine, but make sure your doctor knows that you are taking it because it does interact with your blood pressure medication. If you're on a short acting inhaler, make sure you use that before you have any kind of sex real activities in the bedroom. That way all your airways are open and you are ready and prepped. Sometimes you might need to ch you know, change things up in the bedroom a little bit. So consider some new positions to ease fatigue, like the sidelining, the reclining, the standing, or seated gen with the person that needs to be relaxed, more so into different positions. Use pillows for support, use toys, they're perfectly safe to use. Uh, and wear your oxygen if it's prescribed for you. Don't be intimidated by it. Just make sure your cannula is long enough that you have plenty of room. All right, now we are moving into the kitchen. So we have, let's see, we've taken a bath, we've gotten dressed, we've made the bed, and now we are coming into the kitchen to finish getting our day ready. So have the items that you use the most in a reachable location. Don't put the, uh, if you use the coffee pot every day, don't put it on the ground, on the bottom gr ground cupboard, or don't put it up in the top cupboard either. Make sure you keep that out because that's something that you're going to use regularly. Uh, gather all your ingredients and working tools before you do anything in the, in the kitchen. So when you watch cooking shows, they have everything pre-measured out and it's already all out on the counter, which is how the show goes by a lot faster. And they dump them into the as they use them because they're already ready and gathered together. Uh, use a utility cart or a rolling cart of some sort to help you gather the items to go from the pantry and in, especially if you don't have a confined, uh, a smaller space. If you have a deep cabinet, use a Lazy Susan to help you with storage. They are very convenient. You can put a lot in there and then you can just spin them around to get what you need out. So they're great in those lower corner cabinets or up in the spice cabinet even so that you can see everything that you have. Uh, continuing there, use a bar stool or a chair to sit down and work whenever it's possible. Um, the bar stools are great because they're going to be at counter height already for you. Excuse me. And you can pull them over when you're going to use them to cook. You can use them when you are at the sink to wash dishes. Uh, I know when I was pregnant, that's what the doctor told me to do, so I did it every day. I had a bar stool. Luckily, we didn't have a bar at the time. Uh, but we had bar height seats for our kitchen table uh, being so tall. We kind of like that idea. And so I just drug it over to the sink and to the stove every day, and I would sit down and cook dinner. Uh, use electrical appliances. Um, so the electric appliances don't release the gas fumes into the air, and they're also very easy to use and convenient. Uh, avoid using the oven when it's hot outside or open the window. Using the oven releases more heat into the, into the kitchen area and into the house thus, so it makes it warmer, which is going to make it a little bit harder for you to breathe. So use the dishwasher. I love the dishwasher. And it is okay to run it, especially if you have an energy efficient kind, uh, every day or every other day if you have a small household. Um, if you got with something with stuck on grease or my favorite is we make baked spaghetti so it sticks to the pan. Uh, let it soak for a little bit before washing. Uh, the kids' mac and cheese pan, we have to let soak all the time as well. And if you let it soak even for just half an hour before you try to clean it, it is so much easier to clean. So taking that time to let those dishes soak so it's not as much work for you to do. Avoid keeping your hands in the hot water or use gloves so that you don't dry out your hands because that is not a good feeling to have and plus it protects your skin. And then let the dishes air dry after you've washed them. Nobody said you had to dry them right now. Uh, we, If we wash dishes by hand, uh, we'll let them air dry overnight and then I put them away in the morning. Just like you would do if you ran the dishwasher overnight. Um, the dishwasher does dry them for you, but if you run in it overnight, you just put them away when they're done. So the same thing. Now, you know, if it's your glasses or something, you may want to dry those by hand, but that shouldn't take you as long as doing all the dishes. Use smaller containers when you get food items. So yes, a big old gallon of milk is a lot heavier than a half gallon of milk. So a gallon of milk weighs eight pounds uh, versus a half gallon is gonna weigh between three and four depending on what it's made out of. So that way you can limit your heavy lifting. Carry 
you know, carry those bags in one at a time. You don't have to be that person carrying them all in at once. Uh, we did that all the time when we lived in the apartment. But you can make a couple of trips and not lift so heavy and still manage to get everything in. Cooking crock pots or instapots, which are awesome, and uh, make large batches to freeze or use in casseroles. So that way you can, when you're cooking, like if you're cooking a pot of chili, make a whole pot of chili, and then you have two to three meals out of it. Same thing if, if you're making spaghetti or lasagna. You can freeze those leftovers and have them later, um, so that way you can have more meals later. Plan your menu before going to the grocery store and making a grocery list. Don't lose your list in the grocery store. I've done that one. It's, it just drives you crazy. Uh, but make this plan ahead so that you can plan out your meals for the week so that you know what you have to buy. You save yourself. You only have to do one shopping trip that way. Uh, and having that list makes it a lot easier as you're going through the store to make sure you're getting everything that you need. Now let's talk about a few things to do just around the house in general. So sit to fold or iron clothes. They make ironing boards now that are lower, uh, so they're easier to use. Or find your own unique surface. Put a towel down or a blanket down that you can iron on that's at your level, uh, such as the kitchen table or something like that. Use a utility cart. You know, I'm loving those wheel baskets right now. Put a wheel bas uh, basket on your wheeled walker uh, or a grocery bag. The giant bags that they make nowadays can be used for all sorts of things. They're great and reusable. Use the laundry basket to help you move things from one place to another. Another good thing to keep in mind, too, is vacuuming. Vacuuming wears you out. Uh, so do one room at a time, or do a couple of rooms, and then take a rest break. So making sure that you're pacing yourself out throughout the time that you're cleaning. Do one bathroom if you're cleaning the bathroom, and then take a rest break. Don't do everything at once. Don't try to cram everything in, you're just going to wear yourself out that much faster. So taking your time, spreading your activities out, and allowing time for you to have that rest period in between is going to be really important. So take home messages for today are make sure you pace yourself doing household chores. Um, do small amount of work, then rest. Uh, so if you're taking a shower, take a shower, take a rest break, then get dressed. Don't try to do it all at once. And that it's okay to ask family and friends to help and to hire help. So sometimes you can't get it all done by yourself the way you want it done. So ask for help and know that it's okay to do that. Thank you for listening and have a great day.